Hey everybody and welcome to a new video and today is a special one because my buddy Andy Pac-Man Case uh, wanted me to do a greatest video games of all time. My greatest video games of all time and I have to choose 10 of them. And this is all, these type of videos are always hard to do but I'm going to do it for my buddy Andy since he's back actively doing YouTube again. Bro if you weren't doing YouTube right now man, I would say nope I'm not doing this video but since you're back I'm going to make this video happen. Now these type of videos are tough for me to do because there's just so many choices of games you could put in here but it's just like man to choose like a few of them it's just like it's, it's insane but like I said I'm going to do it for this video um, my choices may change in the future but these are games I'm choosing based on how I felt playing them so let's get started also I'm doing this list by choosing games on different systems that kind of help mix it up so that's why if you see my list it might it may be pretty different from what you thought it was going to be but anyways, uh, now let's get started. Alright, so the first game here is going to be Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. Um, I got into the Punch-Out series from playing the arcade Punch-Out when I was like, I think I was might, might have been like three years old. I was really young, and I was really cheered on uh, by my brother's friends when I was playing the game because I, I actually got pretty good at it. I got all the way to Ball Bull. I think I beat him once, but yeah, I can't really remember too much. But I remember that kind of got me into video games, and then... Um, I talked my dad into buying me Mike Tyson's punch out when it came out for the NES and I didn't even think he was gonna buy it for me But he did and I just remember trying to go through all the enemies and had, Like struggling with them and my brother playing in the game and him like kind of showing me how to do it It was just it was just really a great experience and then finally the day came when I got to fight Mike Tyson himself and It took me a while when I was a, no actually I actually beat him pretty fast so I watched my brother do it he beat him by decision the first time they fought and then I think I might have beat him maybe my um 13th time fighting him, I finally beat Tyson, and I got good at it too, so I was happy about that. And I even was able to KO Mike Tyson in the third round where he doesn't get up from the count. So, pretty cool experiences with this game. Um, stuff I'll, I'll never forget. Um, had a great time playing this one. Definitely uh, one of the greatest games of all time. And next we have Double Dragon 2 The Revenge, but don't get too excited. The version that I really like of this game is actually the arcade game. The arcade game was pretty insane to me, and I'll never forget the intro to where um, Marion gets shot up. And when, when I saw that when I was a kid, I was like, wow, dude, this game is serious now. This is insane. Because I really liked the first game, but this one really upped everything. And I know a lot of people didn't like how the controls were like kind of like backwards or kind of like whatever direction you're facing, the controls would be uh, opposite or whatnot. But I got used to it, and it was a lot of fun. So. I know a lot of people probably like choose the NES version, but me personally, I gotta go with the arcade game. I know the NES version is probably considered better, um, but I don't know. The, just the, the arcade version just had a more profound effect on me, I would say, because that seeing Marion get shot like that and seeing like these guys had to get their revenge was pretty insane. So that's a two for one. I kind of cheated. NES version and arcade version, of Double Dragon Two. Nice into Dreams was a game that almost made me get a Sega Saturn. Uh, the footage I'm showing you here is actually Christmas Nights. Uh, this was a, a free demo that was given away, and I think through Blockbuster. I'm trying to remember exactly how it was. But honestly, that doesn't matter. Uh, when I first played this game, I was like, dude, this is insane. And seeing where games that came at the time, I was like, man, this is, this is amazing. I just remember, like, uh, I, there was a store called Gameland I used to go to. And I remember they had a demo of this game playing, and I was just like sitting there for like 10 minutes watching it over and over again. I was like, oh my god, I, just, I didn't know what to do at the time. Luckily, my buddy had got a Saturn, so um, I actually played the game a lot at his, at his house, and then he let me borrow a Saturn, and I played the game like that, because you guys obviously know I chose the PlayStation, but man, this is definitely my favorite Saturn game. Uh, I think it's one of the greatest Saturn games of all time. Uh, the packaging for this game was great. It came with a 3D controller that you would use for this game. And just a lot of other stuff. The only thing I didn't like about this game was the timer. The time, because I wanted to explore the levels more. The levels were really just beautiful to look at. And I wanted to explore as much as I could. That timer was always, ugh, always in my way. But anyways, guys, uh, Nights into Dreams and Christmas Nights, pretty much the same game. Uh, one of the greatest games of all time. Super Mario Land 2, the six golden coins. I think one of the greatest Mario games ever made. I had a really good time with this game. And it's kind of funny, this game wasn't made by the same creators, I believe. Uh, I think another team worked on this. Uh, but anyways, to some, the game may feel floaty. And, that, and that's true, but you could really use that to your advantage in this game. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going to trip. You know, Reggie, why didn't you pick Mario 2 or 3 or Super Mario World? I don't know. This one just really had a lot of charm for me. And I really was into this game when I played it. So, like I said, I'm, I'm going off the experience I had playing these games. 
uh, Mario 2 and 3. I wasn't able to play those games until like a, a, a like around a year after they came out. And I see my friends play them or whatnot, but I didn't get a chance to play them at the time. So um, that's this one I got to play pretty much when it first came out, and I really enjoyed it. All right, a lot of you guys knew this was coming. Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, <laughs> I think, is the greatest Resident Evil game of all time. You know, I, I, this is how I feel about it. You know, I had a great experience with this game. This is probably still the most played Resident Evil game I played to this day. You know, I, I at least play it once, twice, maybe three times a year. You know, I always say this with this game, but when you play this game, you really feel a sense of urgency. You know, you're outside most of the time. With the first two Resident Evil games, you were, you were pretty much indoors. You're out in the open. You're exposed pretty much. And by the time you complete this game, you'll feel a real sense of accomplishment because Nemesis is brutally tough. He is a stalker, he is no joke, and he's not easy to beat in this game unless you know how to, how to do it. I still don't know how to use a dodge mechanic in the, in the original game. It's very hard and finicky to use, but some of the, some people have mastered it, you know, so maybe it's easier for them. But anyways, I've always felt that this is one of the greatest. Here's a game that probably won't be a popular opinion, but Final Fight 3, I think, is a great game because one of the things about this game was that, if you guys remember, Final Fight 1 on Super Nintendo only was one player, which was annoying. You played the arcade game and experienced that amazing game, right? Then we got Final Fight 2, which was pretty generic. It just didn't, something was wrong with it. But Final Fight 3 brought some new mechanics. Uh, first of all, your characters had super moves. Uh, you had a plethora of moves you could use. And every character had an individual uh, weapon they could use for like special attacks. Like uh, if you had gave Hagger the pipe, uh, man, he could really put that thing to use. And uh, you gave Guy the nunchucks. Whew, man, amazing. But the one mode that stood out to me in this game was the uh, computer-controlled two-player mode you could, you could start off with. I thought that was amazing. Because let's be honest, guys. Some of us, when we played beat em ups we played them solo because our friends weren't around or whatnot. So... You know, them adding this mode into the game really gave you that two-player beat-em-up experience, which I think everybody should enjoy when it comes to beat-em-up games because a lot of beat-em-ups could get, like, pretty tiresome and whatnot, but with two players, like, doing crazy combos and stuff like that, it really feels amazing, and that's one of the reasons I chose Final Fight 3 um, as one of the greatest of all time. And this game has branching paths, so um, uh, lots of different experiences when you play this game. Um, hopefully, uh, people have played this game. It is truly uh, a unique game in the Final Fight series. I think it's the best one. But uh, yeah, you guys let me know what you think in the comments. <laughs> Here's Metal Gear Solid for the Game Boy Color, also known as Metal Gear Solid Ghost Babel. Uh, they should have kept that name, but whatever, because some people get this game confused with the uh, PlayStation game. But this game has no ties with the PlayStation counterpart. It's its own story, and it's just more of a side story. It's not a part of the main storyline, which is totally fine, but you can see where the Metal Gear Solid games could have went if they went with this game. It's actually pretty cool. This is my usual uh, go-to game when I play my Game Boy Color, you know, because this game, for me, is so easy to get into. And when I first played it back in the day, you know, I was like, wow, this is amazing. Like, I was really compelled playing this game. Like, I had my headphones in, had the little worm light going on, and just just was really, like, immersed in the, in the storyline this game had because it has a lot of story uh, with the characters and everything like that. When you call people on the codec, there's a lot of dialogue, lots of information being said. Pretty cool stuff. There, now, of course, there's not, well, there's no voice acting, but man, this game has some crazy scenes in it, and it has some dramatic scenes with some of the enemies you fight during the game. Now, if you played Metal Gear Solid or any, or any of the original games, uh, you know how this game plays pretty much. You know, it's pretty much stealth combat. You're trying to sneak by your enemies, and if you do get caught, you try to take care of them pretty fast before they alarm other guards that come after you. 
you don't really hear people talking about this game, you know, and I guess because I, I, they probably just don't even really know it exists, you know. Uh, there's probably only one YouTuber I know that knows about this game, and that's Chronic Spartan. He's the like the biggest Metal Gear Solid uh, guru out there. He loves the series, and I actually got to talk to him about this game pretty soon. So definitely, I think this is one of the greatest games of all time. Definitely check it out. And here is Battle Mania 2, also known as Troubleshooter Vintage. Um, I actually uh, got a hold of this game probably around six years ago, and I had never known about it. Back then, I was really finding my stride for Genesis titles, and when I saw this one, I was like, man, this is like the coolest game ever. I was actually shocked that this game didn't get an official US release, so this is a reproduction uh, and fan translated in English. I feel like this is one of the greats on the Genesis, and nobody, well, more people have played it now, I would say. And the first game actually came out on the Genesis, and that one was pretty good, but it was hacked down for some reason. I think because of certain story mode uh, dialogue, I can't really remember. And this one, they didn't want to bring to America because they figured they would have to hack it somewhere, and they didn't want to do that. So this game is actually really rare uh, for the Japanese version. Now, if you're in the shoot 'em ups, this game is right up your alley. It is freaking awesome, and it really has a lot of things going for it. You know, I love a game with a good story. It's not really a good story. It's a funny story, I would say. Uh, cool boss battles and you and the different weapons you can choose in this game is like before the level starts It's like yeah, I really like that option and then you have the option of like shooting things behind you of uh, your partner Which is not what she's not on the screen right now in the first level But later on she joins you for the second level and she helps you out when you're fighting enemies pretty much This game really has it all it looks good graphically the music is good the controls work well and most of all It's fun, you know a lot of people will be able to get into this game if you haven't played this game yet Definitely put it on your radar. Here is Gunstar Superheroes. This is a sequel to Gunstar Heroes on the Sega Genesis. I actually feel like this game is way better than that game. I know a lot of people want to argue with me about that, but still, I just felt it like this game was like, man, it blew the first one out of the water. Even though this one is only one player. Now, this game is a run and gun action platformer that I'm not sure if, if people know about ex is its existence. I know they know about the first game, but I, I don't think a lot of people know about the, the sequel. But anyways, this game is freaking awesome. Uh, graphically, it looks great. The music is good, controls well, and it, most of all, it is fun. If any of you guys have the chance to play this game, you'll know that this is one of a kind. They don't make games like this anymore, and it's a damn shame. They try to mimic it, but it never catches the original formula, and um, that's what you're going to experience when you play Gunstar Superheroes. Uh, there's no game like it. Definitely check this one out. And next up is The Adventures of Little Ralph. I've talked about this game for years. Uh, this is one of the greatest games I have ever played. It was a great experience. And it just really, added, it now this is a platform game for those of you who don't know. It only came out in Japan, unfortunately, so a lot of people don't know about it. It is available on the PlayStation Network, I believe, in Japan. So you could download it on the PS3 if you have a Japanese account for around like 4 or $5, which is a good way to buy it officially. If you're trying to get the physical for this game, just be... Just be aware you might be paying like about a half a G, so just, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty crazy. But anyways, uh, this is an awesome platform game that mixes a lot of elements from the best platform games in the world. Um, as you get further in the game, the game changes it up a bit, and as you fight like certain bosses, it turns into like a fighting game. It's really cool. Um, it's it just so many good ideas with this game. I wish it would have came out to America, but unfortunately, Sony had this strict policy against 2D games. On American PlayStation systems at the time, so this game got left in Japan. But uh, if it if it came out to America, a lot of more a lot more people would have known about it, and that would have been great. But anyways, this one is on the list. All right, and last but not least, we have Steambot Chronicles. Um, you guys have heard me talk about this game over the years, and man, it just uh, it's just so much to say about this game, and I probably won't be able to get it out in this video, but. It's just an amazing experience, and I had such a good time playing this game. I remember coming home from work and popping this game in, and just like, man, just being immersed in a, in a whole other world, I would say. This is definitely, well, I think, to me, one of the greatest games of all time. It just has a lot going for it, and it's kind of unfortunate, too, because this game had a sequel that was in the works, and the sequel got canceled because the company decided they wanted to do Pachinko Machines. So, very annoying, but as you can see here, um, you join a band, 
You can do side jobs to make money. Pretty much, I'll just go over a little bit of the intro of the story, pretty much. You play as a character named Vanilla, and he loses his memory. And a girl named Coriander uh, helps him out. And um, he pretty much joins her in the game, pretty much. As you see, he joins her band. And they hit things off, depending on your choices uh, that you make in the game. So just be aware of that. But this is pretty much uh, a steampunk game. Uh, I love the world. I love the environment. love the characters. It's just something to behold. Uh, definitely check this one out. Just want to also say, too, that the controls may take a bit of getting used to uh, with the drop mobiles, but uh, once you get it down, the game becomes very easy. Okay, guys, so that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you guys liked it. Um, I know the choices were all over the place, but, man, you know, it's hard to do these type of videos, and I don't know why people like doing them, but here's mine, and I tried to make it a little bit unique. But anyways, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Um, Andy, um, man, I feel like you held me hostage with this one, man. Um, but still, hope you liked the video. But now, it's time to pass this video on to someone else. And I am choosing the CAG, man. Uh, CAG, man, we're leaving it up to you, man. We want to see your top 10 greatest games of all time. Also, we're going to pass it on to John Entry Gaming. Uh, hopefully, John will come back out of retirement, make a video happen. And of course, buddy, Joe Valley. Maybe one of you guys can make it happen. If not, no worries. Anyways, guys, that's it for this video. Radical Reggie, and I'm out of here. I thought so. This is real fast. Please be safe. This is real fast.